Hey everybody, uh, today's video is going to be about the use of a tow board on a home sawmill. And I'm going to do this in a couple different parts, uh, but the first thing I wanted to do is talk about what I use for a tow board. Now first of all, a tow board, the main use of, of a tow board is to take tapered logs that are not going to sit level on your sawmill bed and lift up uh, the small end of the log so that the center of the log, the rings, the heartwood is parallel to your sawmill bed. And this gives you uh, better quality lumber and um, less waste. And we'll talk about that stuff in more detail in a bit. Uh, but for now, I wanna show what I use for a tow board. This is actually a motorcycle scissor lift. And uh, these are not expensive at all. This one lifts uh, 1,100 pounds. And I think I got this for about $60 on Amazon. And I'll put some links uh, below the video to a couple different um, scissor lift jacks that uh, I think would be good for, for using with a home sawmill. It doesn't have to be one of these. I happen to think this is a really convenient way to do it. But um, if you have an old scissor car jack laying around, that would work great. Um, before I had a tow board on my own mill, I had a pretty low tech solution and that was a block of wood. I would just block up the small end of a log uh, to level it and, and that works fine. So it doesn't have to be a, uh, a jack of any type. It doesn't have to be an official tow board. Um, it can just be something simple like a block of wood. But as we'll show in a little bit, if you are sawing tapered logs, you want to use something to uh, level the log. It'll, it'll give a lot of benefits. Um, but back to this particular uh, type of, of scissor lift. Uh, this, this is raised up and down by uh, turning this uh, bolt head on the end. That just drives an Acme screw that actuates the scissor mechanism. And this particular one comes with a uh, uh, handle that you can use. Um, what I found that works really good, especially when I'm dealing with big logs, is to take a, a drill with a socket. And I think this is a 7 8 socket. And you can very quickly lower or raise that tow board. And um, so, so that's the way I generally like to do it. Um, so what we're gonna do now in the video, first thing I wanna do is go inside to my computer where I have a couple uh, graphic sequences I wanna step through to explain why a tow board is so important. And um, once we're done with that, we'll come back out here to the mill and I'm gonna put a tapered log on the mill, level it with a tow board and saw that into a cant. So hang tight, we'll be right back. Okay, so uh, here we are at the computer and I wanna um, step through the uh, process needed to take a uh, round log and, and saw it into a rectangular cant. We're gonna assume it's a tapered log and we're gonna show this process with uh, and without a tow board. We'll start first uh, doing it without a tow board. And so you're gonna see I've got four steps here uh, in each step, I've shown a uh, kind of a side view of the log, and here's the tapered log in gray. And then over here on the right, each step, I show the end view of the log. And so you can see what we're doing in each step in terms of the cuts and how the cant uh, uh, forms up as we get to the end. So here in the first cut, I, I show the tapered log laying on your sawmill bed, and you make your first cut through. Uh, it comes through here. And then we're going to take that log and we're going to roll it 180 degrees to get to our second step. And so here's our previous uh, cut surface that's down in the mill bed. And now we're going to go through and make our second cut. And then for the third cut, we're going to roll the log 90 degrees uh, shown here. And we're going to come through and make that third cut. And then we're going to roll it one last time 180 degrees to come through here and to make our fourth cut and our, our final cut. And over here on the bottom, what I've shown in blue is the rectangular cant that we end up with uh, superimposed on the original log uh, that we started with, um, lined up by what was you know, the center of the log uh, shown here. And two big problems will, will jump out at you as you're looking at this. First of all, the center of your grain, the center of your rings, your, your heartwood uh, uh, from the original log is not 
centered at all on your cant. In fact, it's kind of lopsided. It's down here in, in, in one of the corners. And that's really undesirable for the quality of the lumber. You know, whether or not you use this as is for a post or a beam, or you may be going to slab it into boards or cut it up into framing lumber, um, being that out of whack with the original grain of the wood uh, really is going to cause your uh, the quality of your lumber to suffer. And so that's very undesirable. The second thing to notice here, and this, this is what tends to bother me more, is look at all that waste. Um, and you know, if you've ever sawn a tapered log without a tow board, and I've done this once or twice uh, when I wasn't paying attention, you know, generally what's going to happen is you're going to make your, your first and your third cuts, and you're going to realize, man, I am taking off a huge amount of wood down on this tapered end of the log. I mean, you might be barely skimming it over on the small end, but on this end, you are wasting a lot of wood. And that really shows up here on the end of you after you look at the final cut. That's just a lot of wood that you're throwing away. Uh, sometimes you can try and salvage that and make shorter boards and maybe, you know, get some two buys out of this. But uh, in general, because it's, uh, it's, a, it's a tapered cut, you know, there's a ton of waste on this end. There's not a lot of wood you can work with on this end. And sometimes you'll end up throwing that whole cut off away. And it's just a, a disappointing thing to, to realize. And so that's our result uh, cutting a tapered log without a tow board. Now I want to switch over to the same process with a tow board. And it's really the same four steps, uh, but you can see I've got a tow board over here. And I'm going to use that tow board on the very first cut to jack up this end of the log so that the, the grain and the center of that log is now parallel to my sawmill bed. And so we'll make that first cut shown here. Then we're going to roll that log 180 degrees to make our second cut. We do not use the tow board on this second cut because uh, the surface that we've got down in the mill bed now, that's the one we made up here in the first cut. That's already parallel to the grain. It's parallel to the center of the log. So we do not need to use a tow board here. So we'll go ahead and make our second cut. Then we're going to rotate the log 90 degrees. And now we're back to having a round tapered edge of the log on the sawmill bed. So we again want to use our, our tow board to jack up the narrow uh, end of the log to make the grain parallel in this other plane now. We'll make our cut there. And then when we go to make our final cut, uh, again, we've got a parallel cut down. We don't need the tow board here, so we make that final cut. And what we end up here is a rectangular cant shown in blue that is very closely centered on the original uh, round log. We've minimized waste. Um, uh, what we've, we've taken off of that log is, is very minimized in terms of waste. And, and you can see the cant you know, goes out very close to uh, the, the corners or the edges uh, of the original log. And so this gives you an idea how much better it is to saw with a tow board. In fact, I can uh, bring up this other cut to compare. Here we are with the tow board. Here we are without the tow board. And you can just see how much better uh, of, a, of a cut you get um, when using that tow board to level your log, level the grain, level the center of the rings uh, to be parallel with your sawmill bed. So that's it uh, from here at the computer. Let's uh, head back out to the sawmill now and talk about this some more.
Okay, so we've got a log on the mill. This is a, a southern yellow pine log. It's about 14 feet long, I think. Uh, this one's pretty pretty tapered. Um, this is the bottom log uh, in the tree, and typically that bottom log is the one that has the most taper that you really need to deal with. When you go higher up in the tree, those logs are not nearly as tapered. They're, they're almost close to straight, and you don't necessarily have to worry about it then. But uh, for the bottom log, uh, you, you definitely want to... Um, uh, correct for that taper before you start sawing and so this particular log is 15 inches on this end and uh, if I take a measurement from uh, basically the it's sitting on this uh, the bunk right here and so basically from the bunk to the center ring or the center of the tree is uh, seven and a half inches here uh, if we come over to the other end this one's about 11 inches if I remember right and, um, you know, this one's also sitting on the bunk, but here we're only about uh, five inches to, to the center. And so what, what I'm going to want to do now is to crank up my tow board until the middle of the tree on this end is also seven and a half inches above the bunk, just like it is on the other end. And once I do that, I know that the center of that log is going to be approximately seven and a half inches uh, above all of the bunks on the bed. I will have leveled uh, the log, I've leveled the grain, I've leveled, leveled the heartwood, however you want to think about it. And at that point, um, we can start uh, the sawing process. So I'm going to put the camera back uh, down and uh, level this up and uh, then we'll begin some milling.
Okay, so let's go see how we did. <clears throat> Here's the, uh, what was the big end of the log, and you can see, you know, it's pretty nice and, and centered up. I probably could have done a little bit better, but the tree wasn't uh, exactly symmetric uh, going around either, so uh, this is pretty darn close, uh, I'd say. And then uh, small end, it's gonna be nice and centered too. Usually the small end always is. Uh, it's really the big end where you, you get the benefit of uh, using a tow board, but you know, there we have a nice big cant. That guy is about eight by eight. And um, I'm gonna slice this into some framing lumber. And uh, I haven't figured out what I needed yet. So for now, this guy will just uh, sit on the mill bed until I go do some drawings and some math. Um, but then we'll slice it up into some nice two by lumber. So anyways, uh, that's it for today. Uh, hopefully this shows you the, the benefit of, of using a tow board. And like I said, you know, whether you rig up, you know, a little scissor lift or you use a, a jack from a car or just even if you use a block of wood, whatever you can do to jack up the small end of a tapered log is really going to pay great dividends in the quality of lumber you get. Uh, it's going to minimize your amount of waste and it's just generally going to, you know, give you a better, better uh, a return on the investment because you think about all the trouble you go through at least in my case you know i cut down the tree bucket in the logs skid it out of the woods stack it in a pile then pick out the logs and bring them to the mill and saw them up um, <clears throat> that's a heck of a lot of effort to put into making your own lumber and you know a little little uh, thing like a tow board gives you much less waste um, more usable wood and uh, better quality wood. So uh, I think it's a good thing to do um, and it's a really inexpensive upgrade for your home sawmill. Thanks for watching.